So Ricardo, one of the most heated issues, I think, in the history of development thought is about industrial policy. Industrial policy, first it's loved, then it's hated, then it's loved, then it's hated. Uh, I think you and other colleagues have been contributing significantly to a rebound in the reputation of industrial policy. Tell me how that's come about. Well, I think essentially uh, industrial policy was seen as a tool to stimulate some kind of activity. There was, you know, economists believe that some things that are good may not be adequately uh, remunerated by markets, so you should increase their attractiveness by sort of subsidizing, tilting relative prices so that they become more profitable, and that that, that was a way of intervening. And then you had to somehow decide who you should favor, you should somehow pick winners or something about uh, making those activities relatively more profitable by by tilting prices or tilting taxes or something like that. And, um, and I think that that whole discussion is sort of like, it's in a different place. It's mm. the wrong question. Okay. The typical problem in development is that to produce you need many things and some of them you can buy in markets and others have to be provided by governments. Mm -hmm. uh, either they directly by governments or influenced by governments. So in order to produce, you have to have you know, power, water, roads, urban transport, logistic systems, and you also need uh, uh, you know, some regulations. You have to make sure that neighbors don't get scared that you're going to kill them through pollution, that workers don't get scared that they're going to die at your place, that consumers don't get scared that if they buy your product, they die. So you have to create a whole legal regulatory framework to to make these activities feasible. And typically, these ecosystems are very incomplete. Mm -hmm. And because they're incomplete, many industrial activities are not feasible in mm. that place. And you cannot really fix the whole place. Because you know the whole place means thousands of government agencies, millions of pages of legislation, and you don't do that overnight. So the question you're asking is, what improvement to the ecosystem will allow some activities that were not there before to be able to succeed. Hmm. And, and you have to start by assuming that you don't know what are the potentially feasible things. Mm -hmm. That you try to learn as much as you can from the things that are already there. Because the things that are already there are telling you, well, my ecosystem is at least good enough for me. And they might signal other things that might need similar ecosystems mm -hmm. that might then be feasible, but you don't really know what's missing. So I think that the new industrial policy is an information revelation process mm -hmm. about the state of possibilities, the nature of the obstacles, and figuring out whether you can sort out the obstacles so that these new activities can, can take over. So it's really about productivity enhancing interventions that is not about giving money to firms, it's giving these public inputs that, that should have been provided by the ecosystem that are not there. So this sounds like we should listen to private sector firms as a government, but we don't want to hear about profitability of your firm. We want to hear about productivity of your firm and productivity of your economy. What can we do to enhance your productivity, not what can we do to enhance your profitability? How do you get firms to answer that question? Well, I think, you know, there's several tricks. You know, there are some things that increase profitability and not productivity, like if I screw with your your, your suppliers so that I force them to sell more cheaply to you, or is I screw with your workers so that they don't charge more money from you, <laughs> or is I screw with your consumers by allowing you to, to increase your prices by stifling competition, or I screw with the fisc by lowering your taxes. All of these things are things that impoverish other people by, and make you richer. Those things are not going to be sustainable in any kind of decent political system. So. Uh, from the start, the, you, you take some things off the table and you ask the test, are, is what you're asking the government to do is your ask about increasing productivity. So you make the private sector put their ask in writing and you make the ask public. And then you respond to that ask based on the public interest. Hmm. So I think that there are basic rules of engagement that are going to help extract from the private sector things that most of them will really want and need to become more productive. Because if they become more productive, they can sell more cheaply, they can pay their workers better, they can make more money and pay more taxes. So productivity is really win-win, and it is a sound basis for policy. 
profitability is a win-lose, and, and that one, uh, you know, the political system will, with good reason, stop. Thank you very much. That was very interesting.